Sometimes a kid becomes a national star, but because they're from a smaller school, they don't get as much hype and become easily forgotten if they don't make it at the next level. Today's video topic represents that idea perfectly. Today we will be talking about Keenan Reynolds. I'm not sure if you guys remember the star player, but he finished 5th in the Heisman voting and has the record for career rushing yards in NCAA history. I'm guessing you guys do not remember him, but if you do, chances are you have no idea what he is up to now. Well, in today's video, we will answer all those questions as we go through his entire football journey, his memorable career at Navy, and what ultimately happened to his career. But first, if you are new to the channel, I really need your help to reach 7,000 subscribers by the end of August, so be sure to hit that subscribe button, and if you like football, you won't regret it. Be sure to let me know who I should do next, and turn on post notifications so you never miss another upload. Now let's get started with what happened to Keenan Reynolds. Keenan Reynolds grew up in Antioch, Tennessee, and was born and raised in a strict family. His father played football for Tennessee Martin, and Keenan started playing when he was only 5 years old. When he eventually got to high school, he chose a private school called Good Pasture Christian School, and he helped lead them to a ton of on-field success. He led his team to a state championship appearance his junior year, and went for 3,000 all-purpose yards as a senior. Despite clearly being a good player, he was under-recruited coming out of high school. The primary reasons were because he was playing for a smaller school, and he was only 5'11". He got interest by Memphis and Vanderbilt to play wide receiver, but they would never end up extending him an offer. The Navy coaching staff saw a winning quarterback in him though, and they wanted him to be the guy for their team. He ended up committing to the Navy, and the staff was so excited because of the way Keenan carried himself off the field, which is really important to a military school. Reynolds decided he was not only going to be a star at Navy, but he'd be the first quarterback to start as a true freshman, and his mom backed him up. He picked the midshipman over Air Force because it felt like home, he could play in the Army-Navy game, and he'd also get a chance to play Notre Dame every year. He was sold. Navy was going to challenge him in every way possible, and he was ready for it. During his senior year, he spent his spring break at the U.S. Naval Academy in Maryland instead of going out partying with his friends down on the beach in Florida. He wanted to learn everything he could about his new team, and he wanted to familiarize himself with the campus, the team, the coaches, and everything as soon as possible. The staff was literally stunned. They told the kid, why aren't you down partying with your friends? You don't need to be here. Go enjoy your spring break. Instead, he brought a notepad, roomed with a player for a week, and joined the team for every single practice. When he got home, he requested one of the team's playbooks to study, and he said that he had learned that from Boise State's Kellen Moore. They didn't have a written playbook, so he went online and found Georgia Southern's playbook instead, but they did run the triple option, so it was going to help him out. He apparently was the most disciplined person around, and it was truly ridiculous how much he paid attention to detail. Going into the 2012 season, Keenan was the backup quarterback behind Trey Miller, but his time would come. Navy lost three of their first four games, and both the fan base and the coaches were beginning to get a little bit restless. Reynolds played sometimes, but he was still not the starter. Apparently one day after practice, he knocked on the coach's door, and the coach feared the worst. He was expecting Keenan was going to ask to start, but instead, Keenan asked how he could get better for when his time would finally come. That's when coach finally knew that Reynolds was something special, and his time would come soon. In their next game against Air Force, the starter Miller went down with an ankle injury, and at the end, he told the head coach that he was ready to go back in, but he had a different feeling about it. He ended up putting Keenan in the game, all because of a gut feeling and the fact that Reynolds had an arm. They would go on to tie the game, get the two-point conversion, and win the game in overtime. What the coach did was right, and after the game, he was named the starter for the remainder of the 2012 season. His mom told the coaching staff, I told you so in the tunnel, and his high school coach told them later that week, what took you so long. He became the first true freshman starter in school history. He threw for 898 yards and 2 touchdowns, and also rushed for 649 yards and 10 touchdowns as a true freshman. The midshipmen saved their season as they went 8-5 before they lost to Arizona State in the Kraft Fight Hunger Bowl. As a sophomore, Keenan got even better as he broke the NCAA record for touchdowns in a game with 7 against San Jose State. He led them to wins over Indiana and Pittsburgh, and they destroyed Army to finish the season at 8-4. They then beat Middle Tennessee in the Armed Forces Bowl, and Keenan was a star. As a sophomore, he rushed for 1,260 yards and a record 29 touchdowns, in which he broke Colin Klein's mark. In 2014, he started 11 games, and he did struggle with a knee injury that he suffered against Temple, and he missed their game against Texas State, and it kind of bothered him a little bit throughout the season. Navy would kind of have a down year too, as they began the season 2-4, but they would rebound strongly and finish the season at 8-5. 
They would beat San Diego State in the Poinsettia Bowl, and Keenum was going to have a big senior year. He would go on to rush for 1,191 yards and 23 touchdowns as a junior, and he was one more season away from potentially becoming one of the best running players in college football history. Going into his senior year, the hype for Reynolds was unreal. Against SMU, he broke the FBS record for career rushing touchdowns previously established by Monty Ball. In the Army Navy game, he broke the Division I record for career touchdowns with 85, which was previously established by another dude named Adrian Peterson, but not the one that you're probably thinking of. He also broke the record for career rushing yards with 4,559, which is just crazy. He became the only Navy quarterback to ever finish 4-0 against Army, and after his sensational season, he even finished 5th place in the Heisman Trophy vote. The midshipmen won 11-2 on the year, and they beat Pittsburgh in the Military Bowl. Reynolds rushed for 1,373 yards and 24 touchdowns as he led Navy to their best season in school history. He was named the team captain for the East-West Shrine game after he decided to switch to running back, but he would never end up playing because of the tightness in his back. Reynolds then went on to win the Pat Tillman Award, which is presented to a player who best exemplifies character, intelligence, sportsmanship, and service. It's an award about a student athlete's achievement and conduct both on and off the field. He is truly one of the best and most underrated players in college football history, and he was going to maybe even have a chance to play in the NFL. In 2016, he had his number 19 jersey retired, and he is one of four players in Navy history to ever achieve that. Despite all his collegiate achievement, he was not invited to the NFL Combine. He did work out for both the Tennessee Titans and the New England Patriots as a wide receiver, while also attending a pro day for the Baltimore Ravens. His NFL dream would come true as he was drafted in the sixth round by the Baltimore Ravens with the 182nd overall pick. Because of his size and the fact that he played in the triple option college system, he likely wasn't going to make much of an impact in the NFL or even make a team to begin with. Unfortunately, that would be right as he didn't even make the roster as he was part of the team's final cuts and he was later signed to the team's practice squad. He was promoted to the active roster for the final game, but he was inactive because of injury. He signed again with the Ravens, but was part of final cuts once again. He later spent time with the Seattle Seahawks and did actually get a chance to make his NFL debut, but like the rest of his pro career, it was pretty short-lived. From there, he was drafted by the Seattle Dragons of the XFL, and he was a team captain and a difference maker on special teams for them. He actually returned a kick for a touchdown, and he was one of the better players on the team, but unfortunately the XFL would die, and he was a free agent once again. Now he has joined CBS Sports Network as a football analyst, and he said he's really happy with what he's going to be doing, and I'm honestly really happy for him too. Keenan Reynolds is truly one of the best players in college football history, especially in terms of ones that people don't ever talk about. You may not remember him, but I, I clearly remember him dominating for Navy back in the day, and he was so much fun to watch. It's unfortunate he never really got to make it in the NFL, but he's going to be talking about football for a living now, but I bet he's pretty happy with that. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to smash that like button and comment what you think. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and help me reach 7,000 subscribers by the end of August. I really need your help to do so. If you're still here, check out my video about what happened to former Notre Dame running back Josh Adams and all my other college football what happened to videos. I hope you guys have a really good day, and until next time, peace.